Hello, I am Paul Hafner, Application Equipment Product Specialist for Agco. One of the key features of the Fent Rogator is the ability it has to be easily converted from a liquid application to a dry fertilizer applicator with either a spinner box or an Air Max Precision R1, R2. This compatibility greatly improves the utilization of your asset, allowing you to cover more acres all season long. Any of the Fent Rogator models can be ordered as a combo-ready chassis. This option installs the hydraulic pumps needed to run any of the systems the Rogator can be equipped with. One thing to note, if your Fent Rogator has a dry system installed on it, it's already a combo-ready chassis. If you have a liquid system and want to know if it's a combo-ready chassis, you can look to see if you have the hydraulic bulkhead plate and return filter. These are located between the frame rails under the rear of the cab. These parts identify the machine as a combo-ready chassis. If they are not present, the Rogator is liquid only and cannot be switched over to run a dry system. The Rogator we are working with today is a Fent 937H. However, the steps we will go through will work for any combo-ready chassis. To prepare the system to be removed from the chassis, there are a few things that we'll want to do prior to starting the disassembly. First, make sure that the Air Max Precision box has been cleaned of any residual fertilizer. Make sure that the bins have been cleaned out. Remove the funnels at the rear of the machine and pull out the belly or the catch pans from under the chains. Once these areas have been cleaned, they can be replaced back in the box. By making sure your Air Max Precision has been cleaned out, will make the process of removal easier, as well as making the system lighter for the lift and reducing the possibility of corrosion to the box while it's in storage. Removing the Air Max Precision from the chassis is a fairly simple process with easy access to the hydraulics, electrical, and air system. First, we're gonna drop the belly pans to give us access to the hydraulics and the air system. To secure the Air Max Precision booms, we will install the safety pin into the red boom lock plate. This secures the boom lock in the closed position, which will keep the boom secure during the lifting of the system. From the cab, we will release air from the chassis suspension. Then we will drain the air tank located at the rear of the machine. We'll locate the air tank and pull the release ring to drain the tank. We'll remove the lines from the T on the air tank and install the plugs. This completes the work for the air system. On the right hand side of the chassis is the point where the chassis and the system electrical come together. This central location gives us easy access. We will disconnect the electrical connectors and install the dust caps to the connectors or we can use a plastic bag to protect the connectors. We will secure the harness then to the system. There are two places under the chassis that we will be disconnecting the hydraulic lines for the system. They're located back at the rear axle and in the center where the hydraulic bulkhead plate is located. Towards the rear axle, we will find the track width control block. Here we will disconnect the pressure and return lines going to the boom motion hydraulic block. Once they are disconnected and the caps and plugs are installed, trace out the lines to see if the hydraulic lines have been secured to the chassis. If so, cut the ties and make sure that they aren't routed easily to go with the system when the system is lifted off the chassis. Now we'll go to the hydraulic bulkhead found in the center of the machine. So on the Air Max, for the hydraulics on the bulkhead plate here, we have three lines where on the liquid system we have two. Here we'll disconnect hydraulic lines found here and install the caps and plugs to the lines. Next, we will go and loosen and remove the mounts. We have two on the left and right hand side.
The Air Max Precision has built-in lifting points both front and rear for attaching the lifting straps or chains to. One point to keep in mind when preparing the Air Max Precision is the position of the roll tarp. The roll tarp should be between one quarter and three quarters closed. This will keep the roll tarp from coming in contact with the lifting chains or straps. If a liquid system is going to be installed after the Air Max Precision is removed, the handrail on the back of the catwalk needs to be removed. The mounting hardware for the handrail should be placed back into the catwalk decking after the handrail is removed. With this completed and the liquid system installed, you will have an open walkway to the back of the system. If a spinner is going to be installed in place of the Air Max Precision, the handrail should remain in place. With the liquid system now on the chassis, we can disconnect the lifting straps and then remove the chains that were securing the booms, and then remove the front lifting system. With the liquid system set on the chassis, we will first install the system mounting bolts. These are installed in torque to 89 foot-pounds. We have two on the left and right hand side, and the four that go from the boom tree to the chassis. So what we'll do is we go around and we'll put the first nut on, and we'll do all four corners. And I'll come back and I'll torque this nut to 89 foot-pounds. Then we come back with the second nut, run it up, and then set the torque on those. Next, we'll install the liquid system plumbing. The freshwater fill valve will treat the same as the side reload. Side reload to sump. And the line from the tank sump to the pump. This line crosses under the frame rail. Take care that the O-rings and the flange fittings are in their proper place when tightening the clamps. An extra set of hands here can be helpful and can help prevent leaks because of a misaligned O-ring. Next, we'll install the front reload recovery line. This is located behind the cab. Now we'll go to the front reload to sump. Next, we will install the hydraulics to the system. We will start at the bulkhead plate and attach the two lines here. Take a look at the routing of the hydraulic lines and secure the lines and add hydraulic hose protection where needed. At the rear of the machine, we will install the two lines for the boom motion hydraulic block. While we are here, we can also install the airline for the system. The next step in the installation of the liquid system is making the electrical connections for the system at the right-hand side bulkhead connectors. The liquid system is now installed and ready for the startup checks. With the new system installed, the first time that you turn on the machine, the Viper 4 controller will recognize that a new system is installed you will get the pop-up notice that a new configuration is detected. It will ask you if you want to update or create a new profile. At this time, you want to select New. This will create the new profile for the system that is installed while keeping the profile for the system that was removed. So the next time the systems are switched, it will load the correct profile for the system. After the installation of the liquid system, You'll want to operate the boom functions to verify operation as well as help purge any air that got into the hydraulic lines during the system changeover. Then you'll want to load some water into the tank and operate the liquid system to check for any leaks. Right around 50 gallons of water is enough to prime the booms, operate the agitation, bypass, eductor if one is equipped, as well as the rinse and clean out operations. With that completed, the Fent Rogator is ready to spread some fertilizer in the field.